that, 24. That means that eight times out of 24 times you hit the ball, that's 33%, or 0 0.33333. That's how they're calculating that. That would be an observed probability, because later on they're going to say, oh, you usually hit the ball eight times out of every 24 times, right? Are you automatically going to become a, a huge success and hit it every single time? Maybe, but probably not. Probably you're going to stick with those odds. That's observed probability and how you use it. Does that make sense to you? So it's what someone's actually done, and then you take that and you estimate it and you apply it towards, towards their future. Say if you hit the ball eight times out of every 24 times, chances are you're going to probably continue that statistic. So when you come up to that next, you get a one-third chance of hitting the ball. That's how you use observed probability. Let you hope you're right with that. Okay, all right. So observed is something that actually happened. You measured it. Uh, the next one is classical probability. The next one is what I say to you, and you answer me this question. I say, uh, what's the probability of flipping a coin and getting ahead? Okay, you have to answer to play along here. What's the, what's the probability of you flipping a coin and getting ahead? Obviously, right? There's two choices. One of those choices is ahead, so you get 50%, right? What's the probability of rolling a die one time and getting a two? Why one out of six? And how many choices are twos? That's how you're getting one out of six, right? That is classical probability. Are you actually rolling the die to figure that out in your head? You're just thinking about it, right? You're thinking, oh, obviously there's six sides, only one of them's a two, so I have a one in six chance. You're doing classical probability there. Notice the difference between observed, where they actually calculated how many times you hit the ball divided by how many times it was up, to classical. Classical is a theory. Um, observed probability is the actuality. Uh, the classical is what should happen. Observed is what did happen. Do you see the difference there? Classical is what should happen when you flip a coin. You should get half heads, half tails. If you flip a coin ten times, are you going to for sure get five heads and five tails? If you think so, I'll make you a bet right now and make a lot of money with you that I can flip the coin. Rarely is it going to be exactly five heads. Rarely. You're, you're rarely going to get that. I mean, well, not rarely, maybe 30% of the time a lot of money from you if we make that bet every single time over and over again. So you're not going to get exactly five heads every single time. It's not going to happen. Sometimes you'll get six heads out of ten. Sometimes you get nine. Sometimes you get all ten. Sometimes you get one. But that's... <laughs> Sorry. That's the, uh, that's the classical probability as opposed to the observed. Classical is what should happen every time. Observed is if you actually do the experiment, what does happen every time. So let's talk about classical. We pretty much just discussed it. This is the probability based on the chance of something occurring. This is, uh, this is the theory, like the theory aspect of probability. By the way, for classical probability to work, um, each event has to have an equal chance of occurring. Each simple event has to have an equal chance of occurring. example about this, okay? Let's say that you had, because uh, this statement, people are like, well, why? Why does it have to have an equal chance of occurring? Think about this. Let me give you a die, and I'll tell you it's a weighted die, okay? It's a weighted die. What's the problem? Do you know what a weighted die is? They put die in a corner so it comes up certain numbers differently. Um, used in Vegas sometime, or they used to, to get sevens all the time. I would never do anything like that. <laughs> but, anyway. Um, 
the simple event must have an equal chance of occurring means that if I give you a weighted die and I say, what's the probability rule of two, you can't say one-sixth anymore because, well, you don't know. You don't know what the weight is. So in order for you to do the theory approach, the, the, uh, something that has a chance of occurring, you have to have an equal chance there, right? The only way you were able to figure out one-sixth earlier um, when I said, what's the probability rule of two is because you thought that every side has an equal chance of happening, right? That's why you did that. That's why when you said, well, it gets a it head 50% of the time when you flip a coin once, because you figure heads and tails has an equal shot, don't you? That's what classical is based on. It's based on every simple event has an equal chance of occurring. Now, the way that we did this, you've already done it. I mean, you know classical probability intuitively. That's what we talk about most of the time. Looks really similar. It's just that instead of number of times A occurred, we say the number of times A could occur. Or a number of ways, I guess. Divided by the total number of possible outcomes again. So number of simple events, and we just mean outcomes there. Because we've kind of covered that at length right now. I need to recap just a little bit before we go any further. So you really need to understand the difference between observed probability and classical. I'm going to ask you on your test. I'm going to give you a problem and say, what is this? Calculate probability, tell me if it's observed or classical. That's going to be like three or four problems on your test. Uh, so you need to be able to identify, are you doing something or are you just thinking about it? That's the difference. If you're observing something or someone has observed something, that's observed probability. If you're just thinking about uh, how many times could you get a two if I'm willing to die, if it's something like that where you're actually not doing anything, you're just thinking about doing something, that's the classical. So what I'll write up here is observed and classical. This is what could happen. This is what did happen. You know what, let me replace could with should. This is what should happen, not could. This is what should happen. This is what did happen. Well, that's not going to use this example, but if you flip a coin ten times, what should you get? You should get five heads, five tails. If you actually did it, are you going to get five heads, five tails? Maybe, maybe not. If you do the observation, you might get six heads and four tails. That's what did happen. So that's the difference. You can do the same. You can think about the, the probability. It should be five out of ten. You can do the probability. It might not be five out of ten. Those things could line up, but they don't have to. But the act of doing that procedure, that's observed and calculated it. The act of just thinking about it and figuring out what should what it should be, that's the classical how we will understand the difference. Okay. The last thing we ought to have to talk about is called subjective probability. Now, before you say, well, that has no place in statistics, why are we doing subjective probability if it's subjective? And you've been talking this voice like this. You sound very <laughs> Well, subjective probability is something we do every single day. You go to your doctor and you go, doctor, what are the chances I'm going to make it? And he goes, 80%. Does that mean out of every 10 people that he's worked on, two of them have died? No. It just means his best guess for your particular situation is you got a pretty good shot at making it. Don't worry about it. 80% is pretty good, right? 20%? It's only one shot out of five that you're going to... Whatever. You know, you take the chances. But anyway, that's subjective probability. How about this one? What are the chances right now that I'm going to walk out that door... Or, yeah, you might want this to happen, but... I'm going to walk out that door and get hit by a meteor. 
No, you won't want that on me, would you? Oh, because you probably get taken with me because we're in the same building. So, <laughs> so if, I, if I walk out that door, what are the chances I'm going to get hit by a meteor? Ninety percent? No, probably not. How, how many? What, what is it? Huh? I mean, is it zero? Is there a chance? Maybe point zero 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 forever and then a little one at the end maybe. But the point is that it's neither classical nor subje subjective. I'm not thinking in my head, how many possible ways could I walk outside and get hit by media right now? Well, and I'm not thinking, I'm going to calculate how many ways I've walked out of this classroom and then how many times I've gotten hit by a meteor and figure out what the percentage is. Right? That's not what I'm doing. This is not an observation. I haven't walked out of this time a million, a room a million times and calculated, oh, I've gotten hit by meteor zero, therefore the probability is zero. There is a chance. It's a very small chance, but it's a subjective chance. I'm just kind of making it up, right? Best on, based on my past experience and based on my educated guess. It hasn't happened to me before. I know that meteors circle around, but none of them's ever even come close to me, so it's probably close to zero. But it's not based on any math. It's not classical. It's not observed. You see the difference? The doctor thinks probably the best one. He's not basing that on any math. He's not doing the calculations. He's just saying out there, you got like a 95% chance of being okay, or you got a 20% chance this is going to turn into cancer or something. I mean, that, that happens all the time. Uh, that people say that. So that's the subjective type of probability. It's someone's estimate based on an educated guess. Now, let's go ahead and do some examples here and see what we can find out about these things, whether they're classical or observed, and then we'll calculate the probabilities as we go. Okay, so first one. The probability of selecting a heart beating heart, I mean like, the, like the heart shape, from a standard deck of cards, if they're shuffled up and everything, randomly selected, so someone holds up, do you know cards? If some people, they, they're not familiar with the cards, cards have four suits, diamonds, spades, clubs, hearts, uh, there's 13 of each suit, okay, so there's 13 hearts, 13 clubs, 13 spades, 13, whatever I didn't say, and there's 52 total cards, right, uh, cards are labeled, two through 10, then you have jack, queen, king, and ace, making up 13 individual numbers for each suit of cards. If you're not familiar with cards, give yourself a pack of cards because I'm gonna be using that in some of our tests to illustrate this. So, probability selecting a heart from a standard deck of cards. So we want the probability of heart. It's fine to use symbols like that. That's okay. We don't have to call it event A in this class. We say we want the probability of finding the heart. I don't mean true love. <laughs> that is zero. Uh, oh. <laughs> cynical. Cynical. Just kidding. Just kidding. If you found true love, congratulations for you. No, no, no. It happens all the time. Anyway. Um, I better not have my girlfriend watch this 